Minecraft Molly. Mother's Day breakfast. Plus Steve Hartman, Jim Gaffigan, Faith Saley, and more on this Sunday morning, the 10th of May, 2020. We'll be back in a moment. I don't know what happened last time. Okay. And I spawned in a tree. Why would I spawn in a tree? What is this? I'm thinking. I'm not used to how I'm called my son. Talking about romance? 
Not at all. There is no hierarchy of pain. That pain is pain and suffering is suffering. So for some people, they're suffering loss of life. Other people are losing out on things like they're not going to go to their child's graduation. And those are real losses. And so I think it's important that this isn't the Greek Olympics. You know, we don't need to measure it on some kind of scale of who's higher on this hierarchy. Psychotherapist Lori Gottlieb is the author of Maybe You Should Talk to Someone. And right now, a lot of married folks are talking to her. What kind of things are you hearing from couples? What's interesting is we talk so much about isolation, and I'm hearing a lot from couples about not having enough space. I used to make fun of George W. Bush when he used to go down to the ranch and clear brush. That was his thing. I get it now. Yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. Jason's like a hole digger. He'd be like, I'm just, I'm in the back. He's got to dig a hole. I'm digging a hole. <sighs> there are no photos out here, but a thousand miles away, Memphis, Tennessee, Devante and Alyssa Payton have some of the same issues. And with three kids and another due in August, privacy is nearly impossible. My tub is my sanctuary. The bathtub? Yes, and sometimes the toilet, I just lock the door and just sit because um, it's quiet. And it's the only door that locks in our room. And having a door that locks might be important for other reasons. Touch is so important. What we're experiencing right now is skin hunger. It's a real phenomenon. Skin hunger. Skin hunger. It's a phenomenon where our nervous systems get activated when we don't have physical touch. And because we're not getting that out in the world with the normal sort of hugs and handshakes and the ways that we would normally get that, it's really important that we're getting that from the people that we're social distancing with in our own households. There's actually something called skin hunger that we all, as humans, need touch. And so this expert that, I love how you're going like this, Devante. <laughs> is quite as strong as the Paytons. The most recent government figures say the divorce rate actually dropped in the past 10 years, but now there's speculation that the quarantine could make those divorce numbers jump. Have you heard the phrase, corona divorce? Yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we're getting a lot of calls from people at their wit's end with their spouses or live-ins, and, you know, we can try to kind of talk them off the ledge. Laura Wasser is a family law attorney in Los Angeles who knows her way around a divorce court. Among her past clients, Angelina Jolie, Johnny Depp, and Maria Shriver. Isn't that Tom Patty who's been the waiting for the hardest part? Uh, um, I represent him. So I got her half of that song. With more, two of the stars of Marriage Story, Laura Dern and Scarlett Johansson, both hired Laura Wasser for their real-life breakups. There have been situations where I have seen how people behave, and I think they're not, that there's no amount of counseling that they will make this through. Is there one particular attitude or something that you could pinpoint? Yeah, but I would have to use <laughs> <put> vanity. <laughs> That's okay. Somebody being a real... So, if you just have to get away... Show up with this! $150 an hour fee. She has a website called It's Over Easy. That'll take you through the divorce process for around 1500 bucks. But Wasser also told us that even when the quarantine is lifted, she's not expecting a big stampede for divorce court. Without sounding too Pollyannish about it, I really do think that if people are able to communicate and use tools and get you know, more intimate with each other, both intellectually and physically during this time, they might come out of the, the quarantine stronger. You say that as a divorce lawyer. I do. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, and I do I see human nature and human relationships, and I do think that if people can make it through a situation like this, like they say, if it doesn't kill you, that's just wrong. Same goes for a relationship. And she may be on to something. I'm trying to think of a word that is corny. Are there gifts of this lockdown? <laughs> and how everybody's going to end up when we're finally allowed outside again? 
I feel like people are now looking at what is really important to me and who matters to me and what can I do to nurture those relationships. We're treasuring it a little bit. We're not taking each other for granted anymore. Metastatic breast cancer is relentless, but I'm relentless too because every day matters and having more of them is possible with Fresenio. The only one of its kind proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with full estrin, regardless of menopausal status. And it's the only one of its kind you can take every day. <laughs> Fresenio plus full estrin is approved for women with HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer whose disease has progressed after hormonal treatment. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At first sign of diarrhea, call your doctor, start an anti-diarrhea, and drink fluids. Before taking no. those any of That's a good word, poison. Shells or other signs of infection. For no, I'm for now. Low weight blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening inflammation of the lungs can occur. Talk to your doctor if you have new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include tiredness, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are pregnant or nursing. Every day matters. With the door! More of them. Ask your doctor about every day for Zenio. Chill out! Come on! vaccine, as well as treatments for those who already have the disease. Allison Aubrey of NPR looks at one promising therapy that's both new and old. I was trying to fight for my husband and my kids, but in my mind, it was getting way too hard. I need a weapon. I need a weapon. As Lana Talbley lay in the ICU battling COVID-19 at University Hospital in COVID Madison, Wisconsin, I didn't think I'd see my husband again. The two-time cancer survivor felt like giving up. I was fighting to breathe, and then stuff started coming out of my lungs. It was just, it was just slowly strangling. You really thought this was the end. I honestly did. With Towsley's consent, her doctors administered an experimental treatment, a transfusion of plasma donated by someone who had just recently recovered from coronavirus. I believe that that's what saved my life. So within a few days, you went from being intubated on a ventilator to breathing on your own and, and, and feeling better. Yes, I did. Were you surprised? I was very surprised. I was thrilled. I had hope in it. More than 6,000 COVID patients have now received convalescent plasma. It's not clear yet how much it may help, but it's a technique that goes way back. What? What? Dr. Arturo Pondeval of Johns Hopkins University stepped up to resurrect it. This thing has been known for 120 years. It was the first Nobel Prize. That's when doctors realized that virus-fighting antibodies borrowed from recovered patients may help prevent or cure disease. I knew that there was an enormous body of experience with the use of convalescent plasma. But much of this was lost to history. So on February 27th, he penned an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. He wrote about his doctor at a boys' boarding school in Pennsylvania. I want to ask us, and I'm not going to kill it because who treated a boy with like a serious a, case a, of measles. I can't, I can't so what the doctor it. did was, he went to the kid who recovered. He but took yeah. some of his blood, and they gave small amounts to the other children. And then they waited. And the epidemic that was supposed to happen didn't happen. His article was published just as the first coronavirus deaths in the U.S. were reported. And at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, Dr. Nicole Bouvier would soon be on the front line treating lots of COVID patients. 
it's incredibly frustrating. It's hard for the frontline doctors, the nurses, um, you know, people who are used to fixing things. But at the time, there was not a single approved treatment. So behind the scenes, Dr. Casa Deval scrambled to build a coalition of doctors. The first was Michael Joyner of Mayo Clinic, then William Hartman of the University of Wisconsin, uh -oh. James Muster yeah. of Houston Methodist Hospital, Nicole Bouvier of Mount Sinai, yeah. and Andreas yeah. Klein of Tufts University. There was a crisis, so people get into Oh, you're doing so fast! Dr. Joyner... Get away! He worked with the FDA to expand access to plasma and get more hospitals on board. Are they gone? And we just got it for every day. We just kept pushing. We just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. Within weeks, patients were being treated with convalescent. It's not just down somewhere. I'm off the other way. They're not dying today. I think that's unprecedented. Uh, 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 and it's really inspiring. Uh, it's Buddy, hey. I've never seen anything like this. I've never been I'm part of anything me. like this. Dr. Muster's team at Houston Methodist was among the first to treat COVID patients with plasma. I view this as very much like an old fashioned modern medicine. You know, we'll aggregate and we'll get this done. These doctors say convalescent plasma may be just a stopgap medicine. Oh, it's Oh, boy. And this feels good. Like Dr. Hartman treated patients Lana Towsley. Oh, what do you think you'll tell your children and grandchildren about this extraordinary moment? I'll tell them the story of a huge movement all across the country. That in six months, oh, really 2,000 hospitals have come together for <laughs> the purpose of trying to make people better. And in the end, it's the community that's saving the community. Meanwhile, Lana Towsley says she will donate her blood as soon as she is completely recovered. If I can it's chicken! Person, Why would it give me food poisoning? What? It's just chicken! I, I do it in a minute. If you could meet the person who donated their plasma that was transfused into your body, what would you say to that? Thank you so much for giving me another chance of life. This portion of I want to say thank you. Yeah, no, this say thank you for saving my life. Before discovering Nexia 24 hour to treat this group with Arthur, Stephen Cole, oh, and Matt, the houses will us. explode with flavor. Nexium 24 hour stops acid before it starts for all day, all night protection. Can you imagine 24 hours without Arthur? Hey, Joe! 50 years ago, I can't see I can't see. You rebounded because a decision was made. No, no, I'm not going to get here soon, so. Making the right decisions today for your long-term financial future can protect you and your family and preserve your legacy. Ask a financial advisor oh, no. to your right. life like insurance solutions to do. Pacific Life can help you plan for your future. It's time for the Memorial Day sale. I get all the things. Can it help you keep me in sleep? Absolutely. It senses your movements and automatically adjusts. You can both double. Save $1,000 on the Sleep Number 360 Special Edition Smart Bed, now only $17.99. Oh. Dear Fresh Bed. Well, go with the air. What are you doing? Then we found Fresh Bed. Now Rudy's 13 and going on three. I'm a smart kid. Kid, yeah, yeah. How you feel with me? What the frick just happened to me? That is an awesome step. Okay, jump. Jump, 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 jump. We out of here. We have one heart. And then we said a zombie. We're running. Get away from me, zombie. You're not killing me. No, zombie. Not the zombie. I need to find my house. I need to go in the house. Then he cut the coffee. 
I wish her a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. I can't hold her at the party to see the Bronx Bombers do their thing. You're doing what, she asks? As the first tear streamed down her cheek. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, I'm going to leave anyone else. I wasn't making the game. I was staying home to make my mom a very sketchy breakfast at best. Dorothy Flay, known as Dame Dorothy to her closest friends, had a bird for life that was unbounded. Though she spent most of her adult years as a single mother. And I'll just say this. I wasn't the easiest kid to raise, culminating with dropping out of high school at the ninth grade. Still, when I found some focus and got a job, my mother wound up being my greatest cheerleader. I knew from my experience as a 12-year-old that Mother's Day had to be planned, no matter what. First of all, it had to be brunch. A classic eggs benedict and a mimosa. A mimosa could not be more simple than I mean, it's champagne or any sparkling wine that you have. And it's marshes. That's it. So classic eggs benedict is just a handful of ingredients. It's a toasted English muffin with a thin slice of Canadian bacon on top of it. Post eggs on top of the Canadian bacon and then finished off with a classic holiday. Wow, now. And then here's the secret ingredient to make sure that your uh, post eggs are ready to come together. Get out of my house. Just a couple of dashes. Oh, my, get out of my house. I just gently. I just don't trust you guys now. Into the water. Make it look like a post egg. Not nice at all about this house that no chest. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I had to wear a suit or at the very least a sports jacket. And then there was a mandatory carnation. A tradition that signified if your mother was living, a pink one. Or a white, which meant I didn't know. No one lost my stuff. Exactly two years ago. And living through this pandemic, I'm not gonna get that stuff back. In some ways, only we leave, I'm pretty sure I would have been pulling Dame Dorothy out of her favorite Jersey Shore hangout, nursing a chocolate martini with her favorite bartender. So today is... No, Iron, Iron Gollins are gay! The greatest mother in the world. Okay. So let's get it that was stupid. So now, we gotta go back to the Iron Gollum and fight him. Fuck my sword. Which will never happen. Cause I can't fight Iron Gollum cause I'm too overpowered. Let's see if I can just can we take the home to W? Better be not. Or we can Walk away, take a L, and freaking don't play no more for the rest of the week. That's gonna be a first. You have a lot of worries right now. That's why many of America's biopharmaceutical companies are expanding their assistance programs to help more people, whether you have insurance or not. So hopefully, affording medicine is one last thing you have to worry about. Search our medicine assistance tool at mat.org. The appeal of indoor living may have finally lost out. <sighs> For decking samples and design ideas, visit trex.com. Trex, engineering <coughs> what's next in our living. Got one more life left. Most trusted storyteller. And then I heard a master of a good scare. I'll create the give up option if just in case. I don't want to see This is about to come in because I don't want to play Minecraft anymore. For the chat, I'll play it again tomorrow. It's the time Jeremy? 
like you know, Aaron. Um, you know, I had all that planned out. And then in March, without much warning, all public schools in Maryland will be closed. I've ordered the closing of all schools in the state of South Carolina. We're going to be closing all public schools uh, across the state. 98.8% of our schools have closed down. No one truly had a plan in place for students to, you know, succeed or continue that learning at all. Lynn and students throughout the country, including those in college, were suddenly forced to go home and learn remotely, either through online classes, paper packets, or lessons on TV. It's hard to understand. Lessons on TV. Doug Harris, Woman. professor at Tulane University in New Orleans, is studying the impact of the coronavirus on school. Coronavirus? It's 75. See, like that one. We're not going to tell you. Which has never happened. You know, I think so. In the last coronavirus. Time. The pandemic has only broadened the impact of the new thing you learned. Coronavirus. coronavirus. Is that so the first we ever learned? Coronavirus. On service, educators fear that as many as a quarter of them are not engaged in school at all. Oh, here is Dawson. Oh, she won't do How well is it going for those who are? Every student going into every grade level has been found in instruction. No matter how hard we're trying, it's just not the same. Jessica Rutherford is a teacher and reading specialist in Vero Beach, Florida, who works mainly with third through fifth graders who struggle with reading in a school where most students live below the poverty line. You have 30 students. About how many would you say are are doing pretty well under this, and how many are not? I would say it's about 50%. Only half. So this is and that may be because to many students, she is now just a voice over the phone. They don't have someone there, you know, sitting side by side with them, coaching them through a lesson, or helping when they get stuck. And so, you know, it is heartbreaking because you just have to stop and wonder, okay, now when do we make up this? Her work days feel longer because they are. There are meetings with parents and with other teachers, all while she's home taking care of her own two children, including a five-year-old son, trying to learn remotely as well. There are days where I'm just like, okay, what else? Like, something has to give because this is just pure craziness, the expectation. Aren't all teachers in the exact same boat as you are? I don't have a doubt in my mind that there's a teacher out there that isn't giving oh, it a thing But you just don't feel like you fall short. Falling short while children... But that was actually a rocket. That's what also worries Kimberly Dukes, a parent who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, no. Primary I'm happy in here. Yes, I'm happy here. Yes. children range in age from oh. three years old get, get, to a senior in high school. Get, get, get. But she works I'm on, I'm on a middle child. I have never heard of this. like TV. Yes, I'm So what I noticed was like, the work was like, it was so my baby, that kids could break if we didn't own the first grade level. This work is not just And it actually broke down. I know what that is. Because I actually see how my children are hurting. The inequities are much more bigger than ever before. Yet the greatest pressure is they weigh on the students themselves.